Good morning, folks. Europe should expect some heat waves. Now, this is not a new topic. Back in 2007, this trend began to be observed, and it will exacerbate. Since we're going back in time, water shortages affecting food product is now a problem for the United States as well. Hosni Mubarak's buddy is still grabbing at power straws, and the people of Egypt did not like it. He now needs a new headquarters. Ireland's austerity was working by all accounts, any way you measure it. I bet they're pissed that nobody will budge on entitlements, and their austerity might not matter. Israel found gas, but they may not be able to defend it. Iran has a new satellite, but may not be able to launch it. And there's a new cyber attack. The only thing we really know is that they're stealing info from Iran and Israel. Maybe I find this interesting because I'm a lawyer, but big professional firms like this just don't fail. Could be a sign of the times. If I told you censorship existed in China, you should say, uh, no kidding. BlackBerry learned that the year of the corporate quitter continues, and as the weather seems as wacky as ever, this is not good news. Speaking of weather, Barrel is the third different storm to break a record this tropical season, which technically has not started yet. Here she is kind of stalled out over the southeast. The worst wind is over. This is now a rain event. RSOE top story, bluefin tuna found with radioactive cesium traceable to Fukushima off the California coastline. Here we go, folks. The hailstorms hitting New Zealand Tuesday were no joke. We had a terror attack, a bomb ripping through a building in Kenya. Canada can't avoid the severe weather either. We had a moderate quake near the Tex-Mex border. And these last two quakes, one in Russia and another big one in Italy, did both ring the global bell here on list. You will see earthwide resonance three hours apart on the charts. Yesterday, 2012 KP24, an asteroid came within 0.1 lunar distance. Today, 2012 KT24 will come twice as close. It should still miss Earth, but come closer than geosynchronous satellites. Look at the yellow and the orange. That's the solar wind speed and density from last night. To put it into perspective, going from flat, quiet to jumbled and significant here. The speed is elevated, but not much to worry about. However, the proton counts, the density, are exceedingly high on A. Some of the readings from the 40 to 80 protons per cubic centimeter centimeter range. Nothing quite as serious here, but you can see that same trend on the SOHO data. The last 24 hours of solar activity saw no Earth-directed eruptions. You can see on the left a dark region is turning in towards the visible position on SDO. That is that same pyramid coronal hole we have now seen three times. It's now differently shaped, but it is set to face Earth during the Venus transit on June 5th. The planet will eclipse the Sun directly atop the coronal hole. Unless you live in that central dark gray area, you should be able to see the Venus transit coming up in just a week. Don't forget Mercury hands off Venus's welcome packet on the way in, and a day before the transit, we have a lunar eclipse during the full moon. That's the news, folks. Be safe.